Let's create a chatbot like ChatGPT in Discord. This is something that I've created for my own community Discord and it has been fairly helpful for most of the people who have used it. By the end of this video, we'll have a fully functional chatbot using the DaVinci model from OpenAI. So let's get started. Now before doing anything, it's recommended that you know at least the basics of JavaScript. Make sure you also have Node.js installed since that is what's going to allow us to execute JavaScript on the server. My code editor of choice is Visual Studio Code, which I'll have linked down below alongside Node.js. Now let's set up our OpenAI account. Head over to openai.com API. From here, click on sign up, or if you already have an account, then just go ahead and log in. Once logged in, click on manage account. Here you'll notice you're given $18 worth of free credit that you can use in your applications. So if you don't want to pay, this should be plenty to play around with. Anyway, click on API keys on the left hand side of your screen and click create new secret key. Copy this secret key and store it somewhere safe for now. Now it's time to create our Discord bot account. To create a bot account, head over to discord.com slash developers slash applications. Sign in if you haven't already and click on create application. Now give your application whatever name you want. I'll just call mine GPT-3 and create it. From here, give your application an avatar. And once you've done that, go to the bot section on the left side of your screen and click create bot. Once your bot has been created, change the following settings. First, if you don't want anybody else to invite your bot, then disable public bot. And just below that, enable all the intent settings that you have. Save your changes and then click on OAuth2 on the left hand side of your screen and go to URL generator. From here, we'll generate an invite link for our Discord bot. First, click on bot and if you plan on having slash commands, then also enable application.commands. Underneath this, give it the permissions to send messages and copy the URL that was generated. Now let's add the bot to our server like every other bot out there. Before we close this, let's also get our bot's token. So go back to bot and click reset token. Once you do that, copy the long string that you get and safely store it alongside your OpenAI secret key. We'll get back to these in just a moment. Now open VS code and click open folder. From here, create a folder anywhere you want and just open it. Open up your terminal by going to terminal and new terminal, or you can just use the shortcut. Once it is open, type npm init y. This will initialize an npm project in our current directory. Let's also add the dependencies that we need. So type the following, npm install discord.js openai.env. Once the download is complete, we can now store the bot token and the OpenAI key somewhere safe. So create a file called .env and first create a variable called token and set it to the Discord bot token. We'll create another variable called OpenAI secrets and set it to our OpenAI key. Now let's create a new file called index.js and inside we'll first start by importing .env slash config. This will give us access to the environment variables that we just defined in the .env file. Then we'll import client and intents bit field from the Discord.js library. And finally, we'll import configuration and OpenAI API from the OpenAI library. We'll now define our Discord bot client and set it to a new instance of the client class that we just imported. We'll pass in an object that will have the intents property and set it to an array. We only really need three intents, which are guilds, guild messages, and message content. So go ahead and add them inside the array. Now with your client defined, we can log into our bot using the token that we just stored using the login method at the bottom of our file. This method takes in our token, so just type process.env.token. We'll now create an event listener which will listen whenever our bot comes online and is ready. Before your login function, let's listen to the ready event using the client.on method. And inside the callback function, we'll just console log saying, the bot is online. If we go to our terminal and type node index.js, it'll print to our terminal saying the bot is online. Back in Discord, we do indeed see our bot is online. Now let's listen to any new messages sent within a specific channel. So copy the ID of the channel that you want the chatbot to run in and back in our code, we'll listen to another event listener called message create. This event will be triggered whenever a new message is sent that our bot can see. This event will also give us access to the message object. Now let's validate a few things before we can actually send our reply. Let's first check if the message is from a bot. 
If it is, then we'll return, which will basically stop executing this function any further. We'll also return if the message channel ID does not match the ID that we just copied. So I'll add that after the first check. We also want a way for the bot to ignore a message just in case we want to talk to another person in that same channel. So we'll say if the message starts with an exclamation point, we'll also return. With all of this, we're now ready to generate a response for our bot. To do that, of course, we have to configure OpenAI. So let's define configuration and set it to a new instance of the configuration class from OpenAI. And this will take in an object with an API key as its property. We'll set this API key to process.env.openai secrets. Now, if you're using a paid option, you'll probably also have to put in your organization key here. We're on free trial, so we don't really need that. To use this configuration, let's define OpenAI and set it to a new OpenAI instance, and we'll pass in the configuration that we just created. Inside our message event listener, let's add a try catch block, which will catch for any possible errors. Inside the try block, let's define a variable called result, which will set to await openai.createCompletion. And because we're using await, we'll have to add a sync at the top of our function. The createCompletion method will take in an object. The first property is the model that we want to use, which will set to text da Vinci 3 and our second property will be the prompt itself. I'll set this to a template literal and first give the AI some context and then structure the string like it's an actual conversation. We'll explain who the bot is. So in the first line, we'll give our bot or client's username and say that it's a friendly chatbot. Then we'll create a fake message from the bot saying, hello, how can I help you? Then we'll pass in a message that was sent in the channel with the author username. And then finally, we'll set our bot's username like it's about to give a response. Now, since we're using create completion, the DaVinci model here will try to complete this text, which basically means it will try to complete this conversation. Now let's console log result.data.choices and see what we get. We restart our bot and back in Discord, let's just send a message saying, hey, in our terminal, we get an array which only has one object with the text property, which is a completion for the prompt that we just sent. So let's send back this as a message reply. We can easily do that by saying message.reply and pass in the result.data.choice and get the first object from the array. So add square brackets and pass in zero. And if you remember, we also have a text property. So let's add that. Now, after restarting the bot, if we send a message in Discord, it will actually reply with a response. However, it may take some time for us to get an actual response from the API. So in the meantime, we'll pretend that the bot is typing for a more realistic feel. Just before we send a request to OpenAI, we'll send a typing status to Discord using the channel.sendTyping method. I'll restart the bot and send a message in the channel again. We first get a typing status and then we receive a reply. Awesome. However, we're not actually keeping track of the previous messages as well. We might need that to create some context and a long conversation. So let's deal with that. Every time we receive a new message in this channel that is not a bot, then what we'll do is we'll fetch the last 25 messages using the channel.fetch method. We'll pass in an object adding a limit property of 25. If you want to blow through your free trial credits, you can feel free to increase this limit. So by default, these previous messages are sorted from latest to oldest, which is not something that we want. So we can reverse the order of this using the dot sort method. Let's also create a variable called conversation log, which will have the list of all the previous messages filtered out and in order. With that done, we'll now loop through all the previous 25 or so messages using the for each method. And we're going to check if the message starts with an exclamation point, because if you remember, that's how our bot ignores the message sent to this channel. So if that is the case, we can return, which inside of a for each method basically means that it's going to skip the current iteration and move to the next one. So under this, we're going to say conversation plus equal to, and we'll pass in the message with of course the username of the person who sent that message. That way there's a way to distinguish who actually sent that message. Make sure to also add a backslash n at the beginning. That way a new line is created every time a new message is pushed to conversation log. This will ensure that the AI can properly read all the messages. Now our final step is to remove the original message and add the conversation log inside the prompt. Save your file and run the bot. If we now ask our bot what our previous question was, it will be able to answer it correctly. Congratulations, you just built your very own chat bot.
Of course, if you'd like to save your money and not blow through your free credits, then I have a much more optimized version that I used in my very own Discord server, which is open source on GitHub. So I'll have a link to that down below as well. If you guys are having any issues, be sure to join my Discord for help. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.